Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to discuss the pseudo code questions that were asked in essential exam. So if you are preparing for the same, that I'm sure this video will be helpful for you. Along with solving the questions, I'll be sharing some important tips and or techniques as well so that will be probably helpful for you if you are about to attend the exam and if you are having the exam in upcoming days, right? So guys, make sure to watch the complete video. But before proceeding further to the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed my channel till now, then guys do consider subscribing my channel. It will really motivate me to create more such content for you, and I'm sure. The channel will be helpful for you, so do subscribe my channel and make sure to join our Telegram community as well. So let's start now with our first question. So here is our first question. Let's start solving this. So we are having three integer values i, j as well as n, and value has been set to five. Now there's a loop, right? Nested for loop we do have. So here we have each i from one to n. So i value has been initialized with one, and the loop will run. Till n, it means n will also be included less than equal to n. And what is the value of n here? Five. So you can just simply put five here. And inside this, we are having another loop where we have a variable j. J has been initialized with one, and we are taking this up to j less than equal to i, right? And obviously, increment also you have to take. So what we are doing? Simply, we are printing the value of i. So initially, i value is what one. So one less than equal to one, the condition will be true. One will be printed, right? And then j value will be two. Two is not less than equal to one, so we will come out of this inner loop. Now there's a, you know, this new line has been included, so we will be moving to the next line. This time i value is two. Two less than equal to five. Condition is true. Let's move to the inner loop now. Inner loop again j equal to one, j less than equal to two this time because i value is what two. So simply we are printing i. So one less than equal to two, yes. So print i that is two. Two less than equal to two, condition is true. Print i that is two. Then again the condition will be false for this jth loop, and we will come out, and we will be moving to the next line as if this has been given here. Now i value will be what three? Three less than equal to five, condition will be true. Now just simply tell me how many times this inner for loop will run. We will be having simply one less than equal to three. It means one less than equal to three. Then two less than equal to three, three less than equal to three. Three times it is going to run, and in this three times, what it is going to print? Simply the value of i. So can I directly write like this? One, two, three, right? Then i value will be four. Four less than equal to five. Condition is still true. Now we have i value is four, so one less than equal to four. It means four times the loop is going to run, and uh, simply i value will be printed. Then next, what will be the value of i? Five. Five less than equal to five. Condition is true. Again. The jth loop will run one less than equal to five. It means five times. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let me write here so that you can see it properly. And five. So this will be the output of this particular question. Now I'm just simply explaining you. That's why I'm trying to maintain the pace a little slow. But obviously, when you will be solving just by You know, having a look on the question and just uh, moving to this part only, you will come to know that how the repetition is going to be, and accordingly you can just find out the answer. You can just determine the answer, and, and even options are there to help you out, right? So you can solve this questions, solve this particular question very fast, right? In few seconds, I believe. So yeah, that's that was the first question. Let's move to the next question now. Here is our next question. We are having the uh, integer value, values b, c, d. E F C has been initialized with 26, D with 52, E with 13. Now we are having a for loop. In for loop, what we are doing is each b from 1 to 3. So b value has been initialized with 1, and we are taking this loop up to 3. Means less than equal to 3, and b value will be incremented for sure. We know that, right? Let's move inside the loop. So what we are doing is we are changing the value of f. Or we are just initializing. We are providing the value to f because initially there was nothing in f, right? So f equal to c plus d divided by a. C value is what? 26. D value is 52. So what you will be getting? 78. 78 divided by e divided by 13. 13 is e, right? So we will be having nothing but 6. So f is holding the value 6. Now we are simply checking that if f mod 13, f value is what? 
f values what 6 right 6 not 13 is equal to 0 no right so else part will be executed in else part what we are doing is we are updating the value of d so in d value what we are doing is 52 plus b b value that is 1 as of now na, that is the value is 1 and f value so what is the value of f 6 so this will be 59 so d value is now 59 now b value is going to be 2 2 less than equal to 3 conditional is still true now again we are updating the value of f so the value will be now c that is 26 plus d d value is this time that is 59 right that is 59 so from here you will be getting 85 now 85 and uh, divide by e so e value is what 13 obviously this is not completely divisible with 13 right because it is 85 and so and uh, 13 6 yeah we can take right something in point it will be but as if the value is integer so 6 again the value of f is going to be 6 only right so 6 more 13 is obviously not going to be 0 so we are going to update the value of d again so b value the previous value was what 59 plus b is 2 61 plus 6 61 plus 6 is going to give you what 67 now c less than equal to 3 condition is still true so again we are going to do this operation so c value is what c value is 76 and d value is 67 so 7 plus 6 13 6 plus 2 8 93 93 divided by e so this will be 7 jobs right obviously this is also not completely divisible so 13 7 jobs we can take because if you will proceed further so the value will be higher right so 7 job we can take so uh, now f value is going to be 7 7 more 13 again that is not also equal to 0 right so d value is going to be updated again so we will be having what the previous value that is 67 plus value of b that is 3 plus this value f value 7 so you will be having 77 right so now b value is going to be 4 4 less than 4 less than equal to 3 condition is false so we will come out of the loop at the last we are simply printing the value of e as well as d so what is the value of e e value uh, we haven't changed right e value should be as it is because we haven't changed the value of e d value will be what 77 so 1377 will be the correct answer for this particular question right so let's proceed further so here is our next question determine the value returned by given function if n equal to 10 so this is the function given to us which is having in this argument n and the value of n has been told to us is 10 so if n not equal to 2 is n is what 10 10 is obviously not equal to 2 so what we are doing is simply return n plus that is 10 plus we are calling the function again right n minus 2 means 8 let's pause so this function will be called and this time the value of n will be 8 8 equal 8 uh, now n value is 8 8 not equal to 2 yes the condition is true so we will be having again 10 plus this will remain as it is this part is going to give us what 8 plus sum 8 minus 2 that is 6 now sum 6 will be called 6 is also not equal to 2 right so 10 plus 8 6 plus sum of 4 now 4 is also not equal to 2 so 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus sum of 2 2 not equal to 2 obviously 2 is equal to 2 right so else part will be executed and else part what we are having is return n so n is what 2 so 2 so this will be we will be getting this 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 10 plus 8 18 plus 6 24 plus 4 28 plus 2 30 right so 30 will be the correct answer 30 will be the value that will be returned by this particular function so hope that is clear let's proceed to our next question so here is our next pseudo code given we are having three integer values a b and c a has been set to 1 b to 4 and c to 1 also guys let me know that the pace is right or not uh, generally i do get feedback that i am you know i'm doing i am moving little fast so let me know if this pace is fine or not or should i slow down a little bit right okay so what we are doing is a minus 1 that is a value is what 1 1 minus 1 you will be having 0 
zero greater than b plus five. Obviously, b values four, and then you are adding five as well. So this if condition is not going to be true, right? So this is not going to be executed. Simply, we are printing a plus b plus c. So a value is what one, b is four, four plus one, five plus one, six. Right? Because if this part is not if this condition itself is not true, we we are not going to move inside this thing, right? So at the just simply the last statement that we are have we are having is just print a plus b plus c. So that's why the correct answer for this particular question will be six. Okay. So here's our next question. Determine the value returned by given function if n is equal to three. So n value is given to us as three. Now, if three n value is what three for so three greater than zero, yes, it is. So return sum n minus one. So we are calling the same function, just reducing the value of n by one. So sum of two will be called. Two is also greater than zero, so we are calling sum one. One is also greater than zero, right? So this time, and uh, we'll be again moving inside this if part. So we are calling sum of zero. Now zero is not greater than zero, so else part will be executed where we are returning two, right? Now for this particular question, it's not even needed that you are you know making all this call. By directly you can determine that okay at some point of time the value is going to be zero itself, right? The value is going to be zero because one one by one we are again and again decreasing the value of n. So else part will be executed. Right, and in the else part, what we are having is simply we are returning a value four, so four will be the correct answer for this particular question. So you have to, you know, before solving the question, you have to understand it. You have to, you know, give some time to understand the question, so that whatever time you are investing in solving the question, if you are properly reading it, I believe you can solve this question in seconds, right? Because there was nothing much to do in this question. Here's the next question. We are having x, y, z, a. These are the integer values given. X value has been assigned to two. Okay, x value. Sorry, two uh, x. We have assigned the value two. Y value has been set to one, and z value has been set to five. Now, this is logical and logical. Or we have x and y. X value is what two. Always remember that zero is the value that represents. That represents what? False. Rest all the values. Generally, we you know true and false how they are represented. False by zero and true by one. But even other positive values or whatever values can be used. Like it's not just one only. We can use other integer values as well. Like as you can see here, we have used two. So if if you are having something like this, if two, then also this if. Part will be executed, right? And if we have if zero, it means this is showing false. So this if part won't be executed. So two and one we are having. So this is also true, and this is also true, right? So from both the side, if you are having two logical end, in case of logical end, what will what you will be getting? One means two, and two is represented as what? One as if I told you, right? One or from here as well. Z value is already positive, right? Z value is already five. Five plus one, four. You are having, right? Also, let me know one thing: that does the positive values only represent the true thing that I just explained? If we are having something like this, if minus one, then the if part will be executed or not? Let me know in the comment section your answer. So one or one or five plus one, that is six. So obviously this will also return into true, right? Because in case of or, you just need one part to be true. Okay. So which is already there, so you don't have to even evaluate that part. But uh, just for explanation purpose, I did. So what will be the value that will be assigned? Obviously the whole expression is giving us true only and true internally represented as one. So as if a is what a is integer value. So one will be assigned to a and We are simply printing a, so one will be printed, right? I hope that is clear. In case you are having any doubt, let me know in the comment section and let me know the answer for this question as well in the comment section. Here is our next question. We are having values i, j, k, and x. J value has been set to one. K value is one. X is four. Now we are simply having a loop for each i from one to x. So one, 
less than equal to x x value is 4 1 less than equal to 4 okay i value 1 less than equal to 4 so print k k value is what 1 so 1 will be printed now j value has been updated to uh, updated by 1 so j value is going to be 2 this time and k value we are updating as k equal to k plus j so the value of k is what 1 1 plus 2 j value is what 2 now so 1 plus 2 will be giving you 3 so k value is 3 now i value we are incrementing the value of i by 1 so i value will be 2 now also this loop we have so in loop also we will be doing i plus plus so i value is basically 3 right because see here also we are incrementing and in loop also we do have increment thing right updation thing i plus plus we will be doing so i value is 3 3 less than equal to 4 condition is still true print k so 3 will be printed so we have got 1 3 till now 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 you, you don't have to even you know execute evaluate these part j k and all these value because you know that i value will be incremented by 1 so i value will be 4 and then updation will also the i plus plus so i value will be 4 sorry i value will be 5 right so this for loop we have less than equal to 4. So 5 is not less than equal to 4, right? So this part is not even going to be executed. So you don't have to, you know, check for the next value of k. 1, 3 will be the answer for this particular pseudo. Right? So these were some of the questions to discuss in this video. Let me know if you want me to make more such uh, videos for you. And if you found the video useful, then make sure to subscribe my channel and do like this video. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Keep preparing. Bye-bye.